What is going on everybody? My name is Roddy and you're watching my channel Roddy the Brand. Today we're going to explore the .env npm package which is a zero dependency module that loads environment variables from a .env file into process.env. And if you're not familiar with process.env, it's basically a global variable that is injected by node at runtime in our app and it represents the state of the system environment when the app starts. The most common use of .env file is to store database connection details, execution modes such as development, prediction, stagging, um, API endpoints, application key, paths, and port numbers. Before I begin, if you like this video, hit the like button. It would help me a lot. Consider subscribing for more videos like this. And if you have any questions, please comment below. And now let's jump on the computer and get started. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to do everything from beginning. So I'm going to create a brand new project and I'm going to show you how we can use the .env. If you wish to skip, feel free to do so. But if you're new to Node.js, you can follow along. So first of all, I have my .env folder here, dash node, which is my project folder. So create a brand new folder and here is where our project will live. So first of all, we need to initialize a new project. And to do this, we can click left shift, right click on Windows and to open the PowerShell window here. And this is basically going to CD to our project folder. If you're on Mac or Linux, I'm not sure whether there is a shortcut for this, but all you have to do is CD to your project folder. And now we can initialize a new project. To do this, there are two ways we can do npm init and press enter. And this is going to ask us uh, quite a few questions about the project, or you can skip this by doing the y flag dash y and press enter. This is going to create the package.json file for us and we should be good to go. Now, the first thing that we need to do in here is to install for .env dependency so we can start using it. To do this, we can we might as well do it now so we can do npm install and then .env. This should take a second and as you can see, the package is now installed and I quickly want to show you the official website so if you go to npmjs.com slash packages.env, this is the official documentation and they have tons of examples of how you can use it, how you can install it and so on. But yeah, always refer to this, but I'm going to show you how to use it anyway. So let's go back and open our project in Visual Studio Code. To do this, I can do code with dot and it should open Visual Studio Code for me. But this basically just opens the project folder here on the left side. But if you want to use another editor, that's not a problem. Just open your editor, go to file and then open folder and you can continue from here. Now, if you open the package.json file, you should have the dependency .env here installed. And as of currently, we are on 10.0.0. Of course, if you're watching this video in future, the version might change and so on. Now, what I'm going to do is Let's start by creating a very simple hello world application. Literally, we're going to console log a hello world and we're going to get the hello world from the environment variable. So to do this, we need to create two files. The first file is the .env file. This is where you store your uh, database connections, uh, API endpoints, application keys, paths, port numbers, and so on. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a very, very simple example. So for example, we can have message and this is the environment variable and then we need to give it a value, a string. So this message will be equals hello world like so. And this is our first variable. Now, usually by convention, all the variables need to be capitalized and you can separate them by doing underscore. For example, a common thing that you might see is something like database name, like so, and then equals, and then you put the database name, localhost, and so on. Let me remove this now and let's see how we can grab this message and display it in our application. Now, let's create a new file called app dot js and you might have already guessed that this is going to be our application to be able to display the environmental variables we need to require dot env to do this it's actually fairly simple all we need to do is require somewhere at the top of our application usually and do require dot env in single quotes or double quotes i guess and then let's do config 
which is the method that we're going to use and then close. This is the very basic usage of .env and basically this is going to look for the .env file in the main directory and use it. But what if you wanted to have the .env file in another location? Well, basically inside config, you can pass different parameters. So for example, if you had different location, different path, you will have to put in curly brackets path and then the path will be in single quotes like so. And then you do custom path and then your file name, which is .env like so. This is how you do the path and I'm going to remove this as we won't be using custom path. And the other thing that I wanted to show you is if you wanted to change the encoding, which is set to UTF-8 as default, if you want to change it to Latin, what you can do is do in curly brackets, you can do encoding like so, and then you can do, and then you can do Latin one like so, and this should work. All right. I'm not going to be using this as well, so I'm going to get rid of it and leave it as it is. And now let me show you and how we can bring this variable here in our application. So to do this, all we have to do is console log something, console.log. And to console log the variable, all we have to do is use the process.env. .env, and then dot, and then we put the variable name, which is message in this case. So message like so and close this and if we were to run this application now i'm going to go to the terminal new terminal and i'm going to run it here so we can do node and then we need to run the app.js file press enter and as you can see we're getting hello world which comes from the .env file if i was to change this to hello world one save it and if we rerun this application you will see that we're getting hello world one which means that this is working Okay, this is a very, very basic usage, but to be fair, that's almost all you need to know. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is kind of like a real life example. And this example comes from the official Node.js website where they show you how to set up an HTTP server. So let me show you what I mean. So inside here, this is like a super simple, basic HTTP uh, server. So I'm gonna copy this to save you a little bit of time. You can pause the video and copy and paste if you wish. So this is a real life example, obviously a very basic one. I'm going to remove this. And what I'm going to do is let's paste all of this in here. And I'm going to, we can maybe put the HTTP at the top. It doesn't, to be honest, it doesn't matter too much. And as you can see, okay, let's start from the top. We require the HTTP and inside here is what I wanted to show you. So at the moment we are kind of, we have the host name hard-coded in here and we have the port name hard-coded in here as well and then we create a very basic server uh, which will display hello world as plain text i uh, will show you in a second we might as well run it and see what we get and then we're basically listening on this port number here and then the host name and then we're displaying a console log of running server at http 127.0.0.1 with a port number of 3000 if I run this, you will see, okay, let me save this. If I run this, you will see that we get server running at 127.0.1 at 3000. So if I open this, you should see hello world, which is good. But I wanted to show you how we can use the variable, how we can set these as environmental variable names instead of having them hard coded in here. And you probably already know how to do this by, by now. So what I'm going to do is jump to the environment file. Let me grab this first of all. I'm going to jump back in and I'm going to do hostname equals 127.0.0.1. And I'm going to do port. And I think the port was set to 3000. So let me save this. Let's go back. And instead of having them here hard coded, let's do the process.env and then host name like so. And I can copy this and put process.env port like so. And technically nothing else should change. We should be able to get the host name and the port name. Save this, control and T or command and C to exit this. And if I rerun by the note app.js, you should see that nothing has changed. Everything is working. Uh, it's all working here under port 3000. Maybe we should change the port number to 5000, for example. Save this. 
close this, rerun it, have that. Now, if I refresh this, this won't work. As you can see, it's spinning. And if I go to 5000, as you can see, it's working. So this is pretty much the basics of how you can use .env. It's a pretty powerful way of loading environmental variables. This is going to be pretty much everything from this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something new. Um, consider subscribing to my channel. I upload videos just like this every single week. And thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.